And this so is what here, Stevie's Barbershop is about. We're going we to have, have, have Pete say something. That is something. Stevie's spot. The only barbershop that we recognize in the neighborhood. There's a couple of knockoffs around here, but you know, they ain't really worth going to. Not if you want a real cut. You know, <laughs> that's all I got to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, cheers. Are we recording right now? Yeah. No way. Oh my god. Oh my god. Woohoo! You better um, add that in. It's turned into a party this episode, so if you see me looking off camera, it's because we have two friends sitting right there and it's just been a great time. Welcome back to All Over the Place with Lane Fable. I'm your host, Lane Fable, and today we are sitting in Stevie's barbershop with Stevie himself. Yo, yo, what's up? I'm obsessed. Can first things first things first, where did you find these chairs? Um, the red chair you're sitting on is from OfferUp. I got that like a few months back. It was actually super cheap. I got that chair for 200 bucks. I want to steal it. Yeah, this one's a little more expensive. This one's like from the 1940s. I got this back in 2016 off of OfferUp too. So that leads me to my first question. When did you first open Stevie's Barbershop? Stevie's Barbershop officially opened here in 2020, but I was cutting out of my loft back in 2016 which was like this like underground barbershop that I was doing before I opened up this spot and how long have you been cutting hair was this so did it everything start in 2020 I, start, I started cutting hair in 2013 okay <laughs> yeah back in 2013 I was 23 years old was that something that you've always wanted to do or it kind of fell into your lap I was working retail at Levi's and then I worked at Urban Outfitters for a little bit and I just decided to become a barber just randomly through like liking getting haircuts and enjoying the moment of feeling good. Yeah, and making it an experience. I actually spent the day we came into shop yesterday because this barbershop is also a thrift store now as well. And it is beyond an experience when you walk in and you were cutting everyone's hair, we're in the back shopping and you really curated a space that is unlike anything else and is located in Barrio Logan. Will you tell us a little bit about the neighborhood? Yeah, Barrio Logan's here in San Diego. It's a, it's a really fun place that I've watched uh, change a little bit, but it's been a really fun place to be here. Uh, Barrio Logan's a place where my dad grew up and my mom, actually my dad and my mom met here. So it's kind of funny that the barbershop is here. But yeah, it's a really cool uh, Chicano, Mexican inspired spot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of locals that are still driving around with their low riders and yeah, it's a really cool spot. I mean, it used to be really dangerous, but I feel like now it's like super chill and more artistic, but it's still like like a, like a really cool neighborhood, I think. Yesterday there was the Barry Logan art crawl, which we also took part in. This was my first time ever visiting was yesterday with Veto, and we came to see you. When you say it's changed, how has it changed recently? I mean, I think it's just changed because uh, back in the day, there was just a lot of like uh, a lot of violence and like a lot of like gang activity so I think it's just been more like toned down to like more the artistic side which I think it's a positive thing but um when I was growing up like yeah like when you heard Logan it was just something like that was like scary or I wouldn't you wouldn't want to come around to like Barrio Logan do you see yourself living here your whole life yeah I see myself never leaving San Diego I will say San Diego as someone who is a transplant and just moved here how does it make you feel when people move here and just fall madly in love with your home? I, I mean, I, th I think it's cool. Uh, I think it's cool that people love San Diego. I mean, I love San Diego. I just feel that people come here from all over the place. It's a good place for everyone to be at. We actually had the pleasure of meeting at last Sunday, one of our events and a like love of thrifting and getting together. How did you start the thrift shop in your store? Yeah, but the thrift store started uh, two years ago. I've been collecting clothes, so I decided to have like a little gift shop inside the store. I called it the Barrio Logan Thrift Store, and it's been pretty fun. I mean, I think I've repeated myself seven times now, but I just want to come and hang out in your store because between the thrift store, your barber chairs, everything is perfectly curated, and you can tell that you've collected these things over years, and there's so much personality behind it. Do you ever want to open another location or do you think like one is enough of a child for you? I think right now I'm just like stuck creating um, the vibes for this place still and like figuring it out. I mean, it's only been open since 2020 and 
2020 wasn't really like an official opening date because of covid and all that shit but i could see myself doing something else i just don't know when um uh, i just really want to focus on having a really fun space for people to enjoy right now which i think you've done an incredible job of i know you also do your music will you tell us a little bit about how you got into music and what you hope to bring with that yeah so the music stuff has been something i've always wanted to change here in san diego i feel like people that are playing music in the clubs or at the bars are always just playing like top 40 stuff so um the vibe was to uh just not do that (laughs) (laughs) you're like anything but that yeah i didn't want to like play top 40 stuff so i started doing that back in 2015 16 at my friend's hotel called the pearl hotel that he used to own so i was like playing digital music there with my friend um hebram which he now owns long play hi-fi shout out to long play hi-fi oh i have yet to go there i've heard great things yeah that was like our first collaboration for like the music stuff but been pushing it here in san diego for about seven seven years now almost so now it's like yeah getting really busy and doing downtown and north park and special events with veto and all the (laughs) shout out to art house shout out to art house um but yeah our house will be coming up on the 26th we're doing an event with 26 and then in october crave yoga Yoga, and then we're going to do an event in october too. oh you're djing the 26th also yeah oh hell yeah some yoga and magical tunes i i love that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> how would you describe your mixes other than magical tunes because i think you need to trademark that <laughs> um the last mix that i made i called it san diego summer mix and it was just a lot of uh, psychedelic cumbias and i threw some tame impala in there and a lot of different stuff that i've been collecting so the the mix that i just released was all vinyl so i feel like the vinyl stuff is a very diverse collection because mm-hmm. i find it at the thrift stores the swamp meets or different record stores like beatbox or folk art records yeah i think the the breadth of your work is so incredible because you're not just stuck to one <laughs> i'm sorry i'm giggling because he's dancing off. there's no way they can hear that but it's funny no yeah i wish i could throw that in there there's like a lot of like low riders that pass by with like really loud music i know you <laughs> said that and two minutes later one just drove by <laughs> which i think these mics are so good you can't hear them but maybe i'll clip the audio from the video because that was perfect timing two things that you would absolutely love to bring to anybody that comes in your store like you hope that they take away from stevie's i hope they walk out looking good and i hope they enjoy the the messy space that i've created i feel like this place is like a fun mess a lot of the stuff that i've collected has just been um just randomly from different spots i mean some of the stuff was given to me um, through different vendors or some of the art we've created in-house and skateboards of course I skate so those are all my skateboards and yeah just a lot of different swap meets and flea markets and stuff like that I mean a lot of the stuff I just find on the weekends when I go to the swap meets I love it I think it's eclectic and it tells its own story just by the way that you've decorated the whole entire place and it's like constantly evolving I feel like every time I come in there's like a little or every time you post something's like a little different something's moved to a new spot There's so much you could do with this space. So do you have a favorite article of clothing in your thrift store right now that you don't want to get rid of? I think that's one of the one of the hardest things that I'm always getting rid of a lot of my personal collection, um, which is kind of hard. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really like fall in love with things too easily. So I just um, sell them and just let them go. But I think the vest that I'm wearing, if we release this video, it's my friend made this vest, like a vintage guest vest, and he like put my logo in the back and he hand drew it. So I think I'll probably try to keep this for forever. I find it so interesting because I also do some thrifting and selling, but you don't fall in love with the pieces. I have the hardest time getting rid of anything. When someone comes to purchase something, I'm like, ooh, should I have put that out? I'm like, should I have <laughs> saved that? Because right as we were setting up the podcast, this family came in that was actually visiting from Buffalo, New York. And... The boy came in and he's like searching, picked out like five pieces he was obsessed with. And he came right up to you and I was like, I was eyeing one of those yesterday and now I regret not buying it. So you have an easy time letting things go and letting other people live with them. I guess I should take that some of that stuff back. I said, I mean, it was really hard. I literally walked up to Carlos and I was like, yo, what do you think about this? And he's like, well, you should just sell it. So he just kind of convinced me to sell it. And I actually 
gave him like a killer deal. I was like selling everything for like 20 bucks. Yeah. Not everything, but each piece was like 20 bucks. But some of those shirts were like worth probably like 40, 50 bucks. He, you could tell he was, he was lit up and his family was incredible. I mean, they were visiting and they came and found your shop. That's really cool. All the way from New York. Yeah. They found this like Oakland Raiders shirt that I had found that was like probably from the eighties or nineties and it was super distressed, but I don't really wear like Raiders clothes. To be <laughs> honest. <laughs> You're like, I could, I have a great time letting that one go. Yeah. So I usually wear like San Diego stuff, San Diego Chargers stuff. So that one I just collected cause I really like the distress and the logo, but I sold it for 20 bucks just cause I didn't really care about it too much. <laughs> I think that's something that I learned since moving here. San Diego really has similar to New York, the pride in your city. I've like meeting you guys and Vero and everyone teaching me that you guys have the utmost pride and love for San Diego. And that's something that I really think that I hope anyone listening or watching understands that it runs deep. What is your favorite part about growing up in San Diego? I think my favorite part is that we're super close to Mexico. So it almost seems like I grew up in Tijuana. Mm -hmm. I mean, San Diego, there's a place called Chula Vista where I'm from. So they call it Chula Juana. So I think it just feels like we're in Mexico and I don't know I grew up playing soccer and like just lived my life here my whole life here so it's been, it's been fun to see it I mean right now we're going through a lot of changes I feel like San Diego is becoming this like big city mm -hmm. which I've always wanted so I'm just trying to stay on top of my game to be able to keep up with everything but yeah I, I love being from here and I like I love the beach and I love the culture and yeah I think it's a fun spot it has that beach undertone, like calm and chill scenario, but then there's also this up and budding like music scene and nightlife, which I think that you really are at a forefront of because all the events that you've been putting out, it's not top 40, definitely say that. So besides the August 26th, I'm trying to figure out what date this is gonna come out, but what future events do you have any set that everyone can come and visit you at? Yeah, so, depending on when we release this the next show i have which i'm super excited about is um el dorado i'm working with el dorado now and i'll be doing stuff there monthly but probably the biggest event that i have planned right now would be september 19th at part-time lover we're back we had to refresh the wine but we were just talking about your next gig at part-time lover wow that's gonna be dope <laughs> 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 I love it. Yeah, no, it is. What, when, when are we going to get to hear you live at Part-Time Lover? Yeah, that's a big, big, uh, big party for me. Part-Time Lover is uh, one of my favorite places here in San Diego that my friend opened up, I think, this year. It's only been like less Can than Can we a name year. drop? What friend? Uh, his name's Arsalan. Hi, Arsalan. Yeah, I used to cut his hair. We opened up a barbershop um, in downtown called The Dover back in 2015. So that's kind of how I got connected with them. But it wasn't easy for me to get into the Part-Time Lover thing. I was going to say, you are the most well-connected, sorry, V, guest I've had on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Me just shitting on all my previous guests. I'm going to have to cut that out. Okay. <laughs> they all suck and I'm the coolest. I'm the coolest on the podcast. Sorry. <laughs> I, I have to say, you are definitely the most connected guest on all over the place in San Diego thus far. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited for that. September 19th, uh, part-time lover. I've been um, consistently digging and buying a bunch of records, so I'm excited to show the world what I what I got. I love that. So will you take us through kind of what the process is of you making a set with vinyl? Because I, I imagine that's very different than digital. Yeah, well, as far as like the vinyl stuff, it's always collecting stuff that I feel like would make sense with the stuff that I already have. But it's just all like a process of... Uh, going back to my Latin roots since I'm Mexican. So I always play like either Mexican cumbias or uh, cumbias from Peru and stuff like that. Um, I just really like like the psychedelic cumbias right now. It's what I'm really into. So I always go back to that because it represents me well, I think. How long does it take you to create a set for an event like that? To be honest, my whole career that I've been playing, I've never really planned it. I just like collect or I download. If it's digital, I download. If it's vinyl, I collect. And mm -hmm. then I just freestyle everything. Okay, I love that because as if you couldn't tell by the way that I've been bouncing around with the topics, I do that from time to time with the podcast, especially when it's someone I know like in real life Yeah. that I like. It just kind of flows naturally and you see where it goes and it takes you. And with music, I feel like it is such an emotional thing and it matters the crowd and who's at the yeah. space and you want to see the space and see what it's like that night. So I, I kind of like that you do that because I think it it definitely is more natural and it's less like rigid. 
yeah it's kind of been more of like a sporadic thing where i just kind of collect my favorite records and i bring them in in the crates and i just pull up to the spots and play kind of what i think is like my favorite at the at the moment has there ever been a time where you had the best crowd ever and it was just the whole night was electric like will you take us through a night what does it feel like to perform like that yeah so lately a lot of the parties that i've been doing um have been more like rooftop parties and i'm I'm not really close to the crowd which is good and bad but i do enjoy more like the smaller bars where like the crowd's right next to me and i could see them dancing um so the funnest things i think i've done is when i was djing in chula vista back in back in the day i would pack out the bar and like it would just be crazy (laughs) so that was pretty fun and people would go on stage and like people sometimes would like throw my laptop and things would get crazy like I would drop a drink on my laptop or things like that would happen. No but way. That was more like raging. Did DJing. the laptop survive? <laughs> I think somebody caught it. No. <laughs> but is there a video of this? I, I need to see. Yeah, that that was crazy. Maybe there is a video, but those were just like the Chilla Vista days. But now I think with uh, working with the Globe, which shout out to the old Globe. I work there in Bubble Park. I work for their after parties and before parties. So they're all actors that are doing musicals at oh, the cool. Globe Theater. So that's all vinyl, and I usually play salsa there, and they love dancing salsa, so that's pretty fun. I do have to say that it is the, the best music to dance to is anything with a Latin root. Yeah, I love music. I listen to music all the time. Are you? Do you wake up and like instantly you put music on to start your day? Yeah, yeah. I usually like try to play music all the time. I don't really watch TV, so if I'm watching YouTube, it's like a either a podcast or like a Action Bronson video or some interview from like Sponto or some type of like cool interview mm-hmm. but it's usually music or stuff like that but um the funny part with djing is that i started djing be, uh through going on ubers when i was like i would go into ubers when i was like drunk uh-huh. and i would just take over the aux cord love and like me and my friends would be drunk in the ubers and i was like you know what? i should just start djing so That's you were always the designated aux cord friend kind of i was always obsessed with music i was like fuck i just want to play some cool music do you curate playlists like for yourself or you're more about your sets you know, lately, it just sucks to say I've been so busy with the events, mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff going on here at the shop and it's just life in general that I haven't really made a lot of playlists. I do have playlists on my phone, on Apple Music, but I've been hearing that Spotify is a little better, so I feel like I should get on Spotify. You were telling me I that, right? love Spotify. I think their algorithm is really great for serving you music that they think that you would like based on what you're listening to and your listening habits. Which is the one time I will absolutely welcome AI into my life. I'm like, give me more music right. that I love based on what I listen to constantly. It makes it easier. It makes it easier. I really like Spotify. I j- it's one of those things that we actually have a rapid fire um, little round at the end, but that's part of it. But yeah, I think music just has such a way of creating a mood or getting you out of a mood or getting you into a mood that I think to be able to tell a story through music like that and through sound is incredible. I know that you had mentioned you'd worked on music videos. What was that like? Yeah, so going back to the first question with the playlist, so Mm -hmm. kind of been doing the mixing more, like releasing mixes. And as far as the music production, I just kind of work with artists that I meet through the barbershop that I think are well-rounded. And I'll make music videos just because my first art form that introduced me to a lot of the artists I work with now or things that I'm doing now with like Topo Chico or my store um, was photography film photography so that's kind of was like my first form of art was film mm-hmm. photography but um through the time i just kind of got over it in a sense i mean i still love it but i was just like fuck i want to do uh music videos yeah you or evolved videography yeah, i evolved to that and i still shoot film i actually want to fall in love with it again but i did a few music videos which will drop the links i'll send you the links for those yeah they'll all be in the description below yeah but I, i've done two. Oh, that's cool yeah one of them was uh for my friend uh, Sebastian, which he's uh, from San Diego, and that one was super fun. We shot it here in, in the barrio. It was sick. And then I did another one for my friend uh, Peter, and we shot it here in the barbershop. Actually, both were, like, here in, like, Barrio Logan. I don't know. There's something. There is a different feel to your store completely. I feel like everyone always says that when they come in. I think it's, like, a proud moment to be something that's weird or different and not so normal, I guess. Yeah, it's... <sighs> The right, I feel like the word for it would just be unique and eclectic. Like it is unlike anything else. It is very independent, but still has the culture and the undertone of the neighborhood that you're located in. And your, you know, history and background really does bleed through. And 
it's just it's really cool to be a part of and thank you for letting us have the podcast here too yeah a little mid episode gratitude (laughs) thank you so much uh for all that you just said i think uh, the barbershop is just something that's been something i love to work on and all the time and it just seems to evolve with this new mural we just did it's like a new project that i'm running with it's musica del barrio which i think it represents like everything i just talked about the music videos mm-hmm. the mixes the part-time lover stuff it just it just seems to be a lot going on so i just want to toss it more towards like the music side of the uh, barbershop so that kind of started with like a sound system and the turntables so it's like there's always like a lot of shit going on but I, I feel like I live for this shit. And I think it comes through in your work. Like you can tell that your passion and the love behind it, it's not doing it for an end goal. You're doing it for the process. And that's something that I really, whenever I see the work that you're doing, it's, you could tell that there's passion through it. Will you tell us a bit more about some other artists that you're working with? Yeah. Um, the artist that's showcasing it, on that shelf is my friend Azul that I just met. She's from Tijuana. Um, So that was a really... How'd you guys meet? So that was a fun thing. I met her. um, I just think I reached out to her through Instagram to to do a photo shoot for our new merch that we had got for the thrift store. Like we got like some NASCAR t-shirts or stuff like that. And I thought she was like a good fit for that. So we took pictures of her for the lookbook on that. And she was such a cool vibe that I was like, yo, maybe you should just do your own art show at my store. Mm -hmm. So last month she hosted her own uh, pop-up that was called Musica del Barrio. And she invited like six vendors and DJs from all from TJ. And then I work with Spooky Mayuki, which is Maya. She's designed the neon sign right here. Spooky Mayuki, I love that. Yeah, Spooky Mayuki's cool. She designed this Betty Boop bootleg and she designed a lot of the merch that I've made and all that merch is just selling out like crazy. Oh my gosh. And I love that you thrift the pieces and then print your logo on them. Yeah. I just, it's a perfect crossover between Stevie's Barbershop and like, you know, Stevie's Barrio, your brand and your thrift shop. Yeah. I tried that back in the day with like this other thing that I was doing, but the shirts that I chose were white and I put like pink ink on it. So it didn't really work. Mm Mm-hmm. But I just from learning and creating that type of medium, which is like screen printing and designing, I just kept pushing the uh, the collect the vintage blanks and printing the stuff on it. So it's been really fun. I feel like all the stuff that we do here at the thrift store when it's like a shop merch is always like a one of one, which is like pretty cool. But I do want to develop the design process to be more like a collection. Mm -hmm. I love the one of one. I actually I paint with bleach on the back of black denim jackets. And my whole thing was everything is one of one. And you like when you own a piece of this, you have there. There's nothing else like it. Yeah. But I do understand also wanting to have the love and like the art that you created enjoyed by multiple people. So what's your next project? Like, what are you looking forward to most with your art in the future? Yeah, I could relate to you on that when it comes to the bleach or like the one of one pieces. I feel like it's like the love and hate where I like I love the process because yes. it's just you're just going to get one piece. So depending on the size or the color and the structure of the shirt, it's going to just fit different, Mm -hmm. which is awesome. But it's also a lot of work. (laughs) Absolutely. But but it's something I live for. So the next collection, I feel like it's going to be more thought out and will just be more uh, cohesive. I think I feel like I just want to really just like take some time off and release like merch that I feel will be for better for the long run, I guess. Mm -hmm. I like that. But yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll never stop doing one of one pieces. I feel like it's a it's a really good way to stand out and represent like local artists or just me just supporting local vendors, the Swan Meets that I go to in National City or Spring Valley. Are you a part of the screen printing yourself or do you use, you know, like a local spot? Yeah. So the guy that I'm working with, actually, he's super cool. His name's Luis. He's actually part of this band called Tijuana No which is huge from Tijuana. I love you. were the most connected and, and everything you do is so <laughs> tied together and interworked and interwebbed. <laughs> Cheers to that. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he makes all my shirts. He's fucking, I love that guy. He literally doesn't even, I don't even think he charges me sometimes, but uh, he takes all my junk because I gave him a bunch of shirts <laughs> that are thrifted and ribbed and he's like, yo, where's this going to go? And I'm like, just print on it. Yeah. It would be like a Rasta shirt or like a polo shirt or just this distressed black shirt that's been fucking worn for a few years or whatever. Just like create something new and give it new life. Yeah. Yeah. So he's been this guy that I've been working with. Shout out to Luis. He's a, he's an awesome guy to work with. Going back to the artist 
uh, project. I am going to um, erase all the window art that I have in the front of my barbershop <gasps> soon. Really? And I'm going to work with the new pro artist to do that. And that's going to be pretty wild and fun. Have you had this art since you opened or do you change it periodically? Yeah. So that process is like really fun because I've never done like I've always wanted to do like graffiti or fucking just window art. I mm -hmm. feel like it represents what I what I like if it's a swap me thing or like going to the thrift store. I feel like it's always like cool to see like handwritten stuff, handwritten like uh, different signs that I see. But anyways, long story short, these windows were being broken um, before I got here. So my friend reached out to me and was like, hey, Stevie, like, can you do some pop up at the store? and uh save this location because they were breaking the windows so i decided to do some art on the windows and i hosted my first pop-up and then all my friends were like well congratulations on your barbershop but i wasn't even like thinking about yeah <laughs> opening my store so oh wow when all my friends came and supported me i just decided to like sign a lease and open up my own store but we're gonna finally erase the window art we have now we're gonna work with sebastian from a pop tattoo shop to do the new installation and create some more hype because i feel like right now the thrift store people are so confused with not having a logo or like a sign so they're just like what well, is this a thrift store See, it's like, so confused it's like, it's it's like a, a speakeasy or it's something. a catch-22 because it's really cool because it is almost like a speakeasy but you just saw i mean i saw this firsthand today someone from new york found you and yeah. came on their vacation so you're definitely doing something right but i understand maybe wanting it to be a little more cohesive as, as if that's where you want to go in the future but right now it is a little speakeasy vibe. <laughs> yeah, I think I just want it to be more easy for me because, I mean, every day dealing with that, with people coming from Hawaii or Japan and shout out to everyone that comes and supports my shit and buys my clothes. But, yeah, it's a lot of work just answering the same question. Like, is this the thrift store? Yeah. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you're at the right place. But yeah. I think I just need to, like, put some signage out there or something. I'm an emotional artist. That's what I that's what I that's what I run. Aren't by. we aren't we all everything I do is through emotion. I think it's a good it's. It's honestly impressive when you meet people that like are in touch with their emotions and can harness them for good, which I think you do. That, that's true. That's true. Can you believe I don't like memes? Wait, really? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I think this that's is my, the kind of randomness like I my, live for. Like, what? Why? Why don't you like memes? I don't know. I just never like I'm, I need to start following like meme pages. But I think in my goal for 2024 is to be more meme appropriate and like love fucking memes because i just don't get them sometimes you just create your own yeah I, should you should, you, I think, <laughs> I think we, i'm a walking i meme. think we could become <laughs> one if we really wanted but yeah although that. you got to be careful what you ask for because like when you put things out do you feel this as an artist when you put things out it no longer is yours and it doesn't matter what you want it to be it is whatever the person receiving it will take it and make it yeah, no, I mean, that's literally what I've been studying is that I want to just be get good at releasing my art and everyone could just take their own idea of what I created and they could just judge it however they want. But it just I just move on to the next fucking project because there's always a new deadline or a new project or a new problem to solve. So there's no time to worry about what other people think with my art. I just do it and I just have fun. Absolutely. And it's another thing that my dad always taught me. It's like, he simply will reply to anything that I come to him with and like ask for advice with that I'm like dwelling on the past. All he always says is onwards. Yeah. It's just like true. there's always the, the next, the next. Like stop. Don't worry about something that's already done. If it's out of your control and it's over, just keep it moving. Yeah. I feel like that's just the best way to keep the creative process going is just staying open minded and not really thinking about the crowds or the consumers or i don't know what word to look for here but it's just i'm not really worried about that i'm just not trying to be commercial and just trying to put my city on and just create fun stuff for the yeah. latino culture just everyone in general to be honest yeah and bring that to everybody that maybe hadn't experienced it otherwise yeah that that's true that's true do you feel that way or are you like kind of like because i i do understand also wanting to protect things that mean a lot to you and are close to your heart or do you really want to kind of bring it to the masses to be honest right now as a creator i'm trying to work with bands with the fucking which is fucking crazy because my ears hurt right now and my legs hurt from doing all that shit but i was like jumping on stage and jumping off stage and i was like wow my knee hurts and i'm like fuck i'm getting old <laughs> how old are you Oh, you don't want to drop it? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. I I, I, saw, I heard Prince doesn't answer that question, so I feel like... Listen, that is like, I'm going <laughs> to pocket that. I, I am now I like, taking that and using that for myself. A lot of people think I'm 23 to 25. I mean, I, I, I really don't care. I'm, I'm 31. 
I'm turning 29. Age yeah. is just a number. So I'm, th- I'm 31. I feel like I'm thriving and just working on it. But um, yeah, as far as that question, I, I don't really, um, I don't know how to answer it, but I try. Well, to it's just funny because you say you're you're hurting and you're feeling old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's the other thing i'm so impressed by then okay wait sorry keep going i don't want to derail this too much my Let's, orange wine is really maybe, maybe maybe we should we should uh have carlos refill our cup right now <laughs> we should have carlos refill our cup wow right that now. is a that is we a should have he's like he's like he's right there hey carlos <laughs> shout out to vino carta thank for you some oh, orange wine i love vino carta and cassie cassie from the globe for sponsoring me the what hooking me up with this plug <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. But yeah, as far as holding ideas back right now, it's just, I don't like to gatekeep too much, but I do like to protect my energy and my ideas as far as uh, working with the right people. Like Vettel here, she's been super supportive and I like working with her. And there's Pete. Pete's right here. Pete wants to say what's up. Hi, Pete. Come on. Come over you here, You want to come Pete. and say hi? Come say hi, Pete. And so this is what here, Stevie's have, Barbershop we're, is about. We're going we to have, Pete, have Pete say something. Say something for goodness <laughs> do you want to sit just say something i don't know what to say uh, say uh say whatever you want say Wait, whatever i want yeah well you, you tell me will you just tell me what what you th- know about stevie's barbershop what you think of stevie's oh, spot stevie's spot yeah <laughs> that is something <laughs> that is something stevie's spot the only barbershop that we recognize in the neighborhood there's a couple of knockoffs around here but you know they ain't really worth going to not if you want a real cut you know <laughs> that's all i got to say <laughs> thank you thank you yeah that's amazing yeah p has a little dog too he's he's hanging out with my other dog i know we got the two pups it's adorable v will you snipe a photo of the two pups together or a little welcome video to, welcome to my life this, <laughs> this but this is what, is what i'm do. saying like yeah. this is the reason i wanted to come and have you on the podcast because i think it's something that you can try to explain it to someone only so much until you see it firsthand and after coming and visiting you in the shop and seeing you know your neighborhood and everyone and how much your spot means to people people traveling here people from the neighborhood that come and hang out Vero, carlos like it just it's i don't know how to explain it other than to have you here for a long-form conversation or showcase it so i would like to showcase it the best i can and i hope this episode does just that and people come and witness it for themselves yeah, thank you so much for coming through. I think it's uh, it's a fun project to have a store where people just get to walk in and talk shit and live their life and just have fun. And that's just what I want to create. And now we're just trying to keep pushing and keep moving and keep creating cool content for San Diego, keep creating cool art and just uh, just live in life. Yeah, just honestly. And it's like you said, like showcasing the good too and just being a positive force. And I feel like you've from the first day I met you on it's always been a positive force and that's what I try to implement in my life so I love meeting people but like specifically after moving here not knowing anyone and finding people who really have that same lust for life it uh it's just great yeah I think my dad taught me that just to not worry about the the sidelines too much and just enjoy life more and travel more I've been trying to get out more I think I'm gonna go to Mexico in September so oh, nice. be fun. Before, where in Mexico I'm gonna go to Mexico City I've, go, I've only been once, but I was much younger. Yeah, I'm going to go to Mexico City on September 1st. And I just got back from Guadalajara a few months back. So that was really cool. So I've been really just trying to tap in with, like, my Mexican uh, community and go out there. And I've been going to the swap meets out there and, like, just fucking buying everything I can <laughs> while I'm there. You're like, I'll take it all. Literally stuff my luggage. Like, I just <laughs> stuffed that shit. I, I came back with, like, 50 other items that I didn't come. Well, with. I will say, after we finish and wrap up this episode, I will... <laughs> We got Pete. His Aww. dog is. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, after we wrap up this episode, I am most definitely buying a few things because I have had my eye on things since yesterday. I'm s- excited to see what you pick out. Um, the guys that just came in, they bought like six different things, and yesterday I think I sold like fucking 20, 20 items. So I know. I hope this stuff is still there. That's something that if you're listening, take away. If you see something in TV shop that you want. You need to buy it right away because I think the shirt that I wanted yesterday, that boy that just came in from New York, my own fellow New Yorker just stole that from me. But I do I do think that uh, you have some great finds and I've thrifted quite a few places in San Diego since moving here. And I will say you have my favorite finds. 
Yeah, when it comes to the clothes, I feel like it's a passion project. So I usually just try to buy things that I really think are cohesive and nice. And um, I mean, I guess vintage, to be honest, but I just really think it's uh, something I put my whole passion into and just not really focus on the price, but just more on like things that I like. Yeah. And also, well, one, I feel like we have similar style, too, because I was looking through and I want everything you have on your racks. But it's one of those things that definitely you can tell that there was thought behind it and you didn't just pick a bunch of random like y- that you can tell that there's passion behind the things that you do and i think that that is very admirable yeah the the thrift store is something that was supposed to be a little small project as a gift shop like i called it earlier but it just kind of blew up and we got people from new york like you said or hawaii japan europe fucking everywhere they come and here. do they say they found you on instagram like how did they even find you yeah so i am not active on tiktok but some people find me from tiktok oh people find me from instagram but my favorite is uh google (laughs) Google. i'm on google (laughs) well that is how i got here today because i don't drive anywhere without throwing it in my maps yeah and yeah stevie's barbershop is right it's great on google you got all the reviews yeah stevie's barbershop uh here in barrio logan and the barrio logan thrift stores here in the heart of barrio logan right here in chicano park that was amazing this was super fun like him coming and giving a little spot and say that this is the best. Yeah, he always walks by and says some funny shit in the barbershop. It's so funny when he comes in. His name's Pete. Uh, he's like a local guy that's been here like since the 70s. And he like walks around with his dog and a speaker and just posts up playing like uh, John Lee Hooker, like some country, <laughs> some old country music. Oh, he likes country. Yeah, he likes that. Uh, John Lee Hooker. That's what he's always playing when he walks in the door. And I'm just like, okay, I got to put the music down. He's going to say some shit. He always says some funny stuff. I kind of like that. I'm just so happy because like this is what I wanted the podcast to be. Like everyone getting together, traveling, witnessing Hell things yeah. that you wouldn't otherwise. Like if I was in a little studio and we didn't set up set up in people's places and like your home basically, yeah. it never would have been, it just wouldn't be the same. You don't get the same feel for the spot. So that's really what all over the place ooh, is. Ooh, ooh, hey. ooh okay. I don't know. Sunday fun day, baby. Cheers. We're all about Sunday fun day at Stevie's. Stevie's. Yeah, no, I was I was gonna move this to my crib because we have AC, but I'm glad we did it here because I, I I figured it was gonna be like this. You called me on the way over and you were like, "Well, you know, it's gonna be really hot," and I was like, "We will sauna this episode out because there is nothing better than." I was sitting fuck- in this shop. You asked me a question, and I don't know what. The first question you asked me, I just started sweating because we turn <laughs> off all the fans for the the, the, the for the, for the well, fans also, when to we hear first us. Start. It's kind of like it, it's not nerve wracking, but it's like oh, I gotta watch what I say. But now we we're in the flow of it. Not gonna lie, when I woke up and I was hanging out before I went to the swami, I was like, fuck, I'm kind of nervous. Like, why did I agree to do no a way. podcast? Yeah, I was like super nervous. I get. I feel like as an artist, I always get um. Like low key, I hate to use the word anxiety, but I mm-hmm. get like a little bit of anxiety. Or do you do you think that's because of like you're thinking of how you're gonna be perceived by other people? Because I run into that from time to time, and then I whip myself out of it. And I'm like, listen, do what you want to do. A, a little bit, yeah, yeah. I think a little bit is just kind of being like, damn, I want to take a like, I just want to like do whatever I want and not have to like commit to doing something. Mm-hmm. But I think doing this is going to open a lot of doors and people are going to hear about it and i think i'm going to promote it right so i think it's fun but just in the morning i was like wow like i gotta answer questions and yeah. it's like kind of nerve-wracking but it happens to me when i perform too so it's just like a i think it's just something that i always go through yeah i mean it's not natural to have two cameras pointed at you and have someone asking you very questions that i didn't even send you prior because i like it to be just a flowing conversation like it doesn't need to be rigid it doesn't need and if there's anything you'd like to add always feel free to Chirping not gonna lie this has been super fucking fun i think it's like super cool what you're asking me and i think what you're doing for the community here in san diego is super fun and hopefully it just keeps growing and i think you're uh, doing a good job thank you so much that means a lot this has been the best day ever i'm like so amped <laughs> right now Who, what's what's next what's next on the on the agenda oh look he's turning into the podcast host he, he's on here for a second <laughs> he's like he's got it going actually there were a few artists that we met yesterday while we were thrifting on um barrio logan that i want to have on like mary june shout out i bought a gift for my mom from her and i was like you know what your her studio as well there was just this this feeling when you walk in that you could tell that someone put all of their love and passion into a place and there is no replicating that. Like you can hire the the best interior designers, anything, but you can tell when someone has put their love and their 
yeah. whole being into a place, just like your shop and just like her studio. So hopefully what's next, I'd love to travel around. Um, I'm embarrassed to say my passport's expired right now, which is like a crime. I Because this podcast was meant to be a traveling podcast. I used to go to a new country every month. That's sick. And now I'm really kind of, I really want it to be my new home, like San Diego, and really showcase the little business, like the mom and pop shops and like the true businesses here. But ultimately, I would love to have it be a traveling podcast and really bring it. Granted, I did travel here to your home, but I'd love it to be, uh, you know, like take it outside of California and, you know, maybe head to New Mexico and head to states that I've never been and showcase people that maybe never would have been open to being on a podcast, like you said, and have them kind of just sit down and have a conversation human to human. And whoever listens, hopefully they can pull some something valuable from it and just have people's stories be documented. That's super cool that you're doing that. I think uh, Mary here in Barrio Logan, she's been putting in a lot of work. I actually met her when I still had my barbershop like underground and stuff. And she used to live in his, she actually used to live here. She no used to way. live in these apartments. And uh, I've been seeing her uh, flourish and evaluate her like art. And she's done work for like beer companies yeah. and wine companies. And her art is super, uh, super peaceful, I think. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear that podcast. But shout out to her. She's super sweet. And I she's always been like a really big supporter, too. I think something that I find so incredible about your neighborhood and your home is it reminds me a lot of the small neighborhood. My family has a hundred year old bakery in Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan. And everyone in the neighborhood knows each other and everyone looks out for each other. Yeah. I think that can get lost sometimes in big cities. But to see that here is so, it's just, there is like a, a sense of peace when you, you yeah. know, people walk by and they feel comfortable coming and stopping and say hello. Yeah. And th it's that human connection that I really would hope to also bring through all over the places that should never be lost. And I think that that is of utmost value. Oh, yeah. uh, both the cameras cut. I think Barrio Logan is a place that has been a place where I was supposed to end up. Cause just that's I'm sorry the camera cut but you said you said that God wanted you to be in yeah God wanted me to be end up here I think I think he just wanted me to end up here because I mean I was all over the place I was in downtown I started in the North Park and I'm from San Isidro and Chula Vista like the South Bay of San Diego but I ended up in the city which has been such a fun crazy ass life to be honest I mean my car has been broken into and no way. I've run into a lot of I mean it's, it's a city you know it's a yeah big, it's a I mean big, that, it's a that's true that's city yeah, life it's just a city I shouldn't life, say so. no way I just yeah mean. it's like it sucks but it's like shit happens but it's just been a fun project and I actually really want to shout out my friend Hector that I met um he went up to me at Thorn Brewery he told me he knew my dad because my dad grew up here in Barrio Logan but he's actually a huge activist and um huge part of the barrio logan community and he does all the i guess barrio logan is uh fixing the chicano park and revamping a mm -hmm. lot of the art right now if you go to the park they're uh revamping all the art oh, they're not wow. changing it they're just fixing it yeah um but he's a big part of it so hector did the mural by the bathrooms with the two uh cheeto looking uh animals but um he just told me some fact yesterday that chicano park is the biggest outside museum in the world wow yeah, so you should go to Chicano Park and I mean, just trip out under the bridge. There's, there's art everywhere, but he told me that yesterday and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I would love crazy. to. That's Have like, you been to Slab City? Uh, no, I've never been there. Because I feel like that's a huge, I mean, granted, uh, Vero and I just went like last month, but it, it was outdoor. Dude, but these I don't guys know. are like, they're having fun over there. <laughs> Oh, so this are is they, are we have are we, are we like oh, this is like, like crazy? Are we having more fun? Or are they, they having more fun? I do think Jeez. that's another thing I love about this podcast is it turned into like hangouts <laughs> and it turned yeah. out into, and I really would love for. Okay, this is crazy, but this is a cool idea. I'm just gonna say it off top, but I think Veto should have us do this at her next our halls event, and, and we should do it live. Oh. And release it, release it on YouTube or wherever we want. Okay, I love sick. this. Or we should do like a little confessional where like it's not you don't see people's faces, Ooh. but it's their voices saying like their biggest secret. Or I know maybe last time they said that, huh? It was like they were like on the cards. cards. You yeah, should, you should do something like that. Wait, I love that you idea. Could, you, sh you should put the the person. I, I feel like I want to see. You want to see? Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> so you okay? There was a I few like funny this. notes last time. It was pretty funny. But uh, you want you want everyone to say what? No, I, I just think that it'd be kind of cool to just record the uh, the whole process of being there and saying hi to people and just people like coming and going. I feel like the live podcasters like slept on. I feel like people should see the live event and, mm -hmm. and process the th the whole thing. I like that because I do think that a lot of 
my artistry, I will say, like come it comes together in editing. Like when I piece things together for vlogs. But there is something to be said about live, uncut, unedited, just streaming. Vero, are you gonna approve us to do this at your next event? Oh, absolutely. In the corner. In the cor- us in the corner. She wants us in a small little corner. <laughs> only what? <laughs> she said only good only things pa- can only be said. Only good things can be said. Okay, that's I don't cool. know, enough wine. Well, she's approving it. She's approving it. Cheers. <laughs> she's approving it. Wait, that could be fun. We'll be there. We'll be there. Okay, so I used to I used to be fairly fluent in Spanish. I took it for... ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? But then I forgot. Oh. I stopped practicing. I don't remember. I can like understand f- a few things. ¿Cómo se te olvidó? ¿Qué pasó? We finished a wine bottle. We finished two wine bottles. This is what happens this whenever is, I record an episode. If you guys are listening to this, I'm a little drunk. <gasps> are you? A little buzzed. Maybe we should have started drinking before because I feel like you're like really in your element right I now. I know. Yeah, yeah. And today has been fun overall. He's I like, guess I need to yell more. I'm like not loud enough. <laughs> Which is crazy because normally like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do rapid fire. But normally I would say Italian and Mexicans always get called loud. Yeah, that's true. Like V I'm and I, Vero and I really relate on that where we're like, oh, we're both loud. We're both like super family oriented. We just. For some weird reason, like I'm always on the limelight but i like to be background like i'm super shy low i key. don't believe you for a second yeah i know people always say that but i'm like i don't believe you for a I'm, second yeah i'm low on the microphone like i'm always if i go to a, if i go to a club or anywhere i'm always in the back like i'm just chilling i'm always just chilling like i like i like i don't know it's like what weird. do you it's mean like, you are the dj i know well yeah yeah i'm saying if i'm not djing i'm just like watching the music shazamming shit <laughs> <laughs> like shazamming. yeah i'm like yo what song is this <laughs> i love this all right are you ready for some rapid fire? I've never. Uh, what's rapid fire? So I'm going to ask you just like a little series of questions. You can answer as in-depth or as shallowly as you want. Just like real quick. Okay. Light my fire. Texting or audio message? You know what's weird is that lately I've been an audio message guy. And I think because I'm a It's nec- because I started sending you audio messages. You know what? And then I feel like because I'm a Nextel like, generation where it was like the brr, brr, like reaching out <laughs> to people like uh, yo brr, brr, what's up but anyways i hate texting uh, i'm more of a caller if i could answer that completely honest i like to call people and just be like yo what's up i like that favorite day of the week i hate mondays i'm like garfield i hate mondays um, why but you have the coolest job i feel like monday right. would be that was just to be actually cool, yeah, you guess, you yeah. don't have any days off I, yeah I, I don't know yeah having a store is crazy i'm fucking i'm always working every People call me. I'm in the shower and they're like, yo, can I get a haircut right now? I'm like, damn. You're like, be there in 10. <laughs> Favorite day of the week is Friday for sure. What song have you had on repeat lately? Uh, Fuck. That's super hard to answer because I feel like I'm always listening to different shit. Top of my phone, probably. You know what? I really, I'm like, I'm circling. I'm saying whatever I can because I don't know how to answer this question. But That's my, why it's rapid fire, my baby. My favorite band right now is Carlos Estellos. What country is at the top of your travel list? Mexico. I'm only going to Mexico before before I go anywhere because people have been wanting me to go to Japan and cut hair and shit, but I'm not going anywhere until I travel all my routes and go to Mexico because Mexico fucking inspires me and I love it. I like that. Pasta or pizza? Pizza. Winter or summer? Summer. I'm a summer boy forever. Fall or spring? Spring. Spring break. East <laughs> coast or west coast? <laughs> <laughs> he's like fuck the west East coast, coast <laughs> motherfucker that I, laugh <laughs> that laugh said everything everything coast, you needed west to know coast, west coast <laughs> are you motivated by fear or inspiration kind of both i mean fear i mean fuck fear to be honest but inspiration is my it's everything i feel like everyone should be inspired everything i do is from inspiration i don't copy anything i do but it's from inspiration and being inspired new york city or la i think I like. Have you have you been to New York? Yeah, I've been to New York. So it's kind of funny. And he still says fuck these guys. Yeah, no, no. I love. You know, it's funny. I I feel like they're both lovable. Like L.A. Like I went there like when I was trying to get inspired to inspire me. But New York was like the first place I went to out of Barber College, which is back in 2013. I've been there twice. I stayed there in Soho and then I went to Manhattan. But I Soho is in Manhattan. I think I've had more fun in LA, but they're both the same same to me. I feel like San Diego's becoming like No way, wait, wait. You think New York and LA are the same? 
I don't know. I don't know. I think they're both cool. Like, I just, I feel like the people in New York and Soho, which is like Tuft Barbershop, shout out mm. to Tuft Barbershop, my homie Miles and Jane Boombots and everybody over there in, in, the, in New York have shown me so much love. And I haven't met Georgia Esparza, but I want to meet Georgia Esparza. But New York is super iconic, to be honest. It's super fun. And it's like, I think I was there last time and somebody hit me with an umbrella. Like, nobody, nobody gives a fuck over there. Like, it's unlike anything else. Yeah, I'll give you that. People will push you and do whatever. But LA is cool too because it's right here. So. It's like it feels like home still. Yeah, I'm I'm from San Diego. Though, there, so I know to, it's hard to answer that I, question. Listen, that's fair. Sweet or salty? Salty. I'm a salty ass motherfucker. Tea or coffee? Coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. I was reading about this. Maybe I have ADHD because I drink so much coffee. <laughs> I think I have ADHD, and then I started <laughs> drinking coffee and it made it worse. Dogs <laughs> or cats? Dogs. I'm scared of cats. Oh, what's your pup's name again? Bunny, like bad bunny. But bunny. Vacation or travel? Um, super weird story. I am I was against traveling for some weird reason because I was obsessed with working, but now I'm traveling for inspiration to so travel. Introvert or extrovert? And uh, I just live my life and do whatever I want. <laughs> I was gonna say he doesn't like the limelight, <laughs> but he's having a fun ass time on this yeah. podcast. But he doesn't want to be Call at the me bank, bipolar. But, but he's the DJ. <laughs> No, I think you and I are the same. It's just, you know, a yeah. sprinkle of ADD. I'm just the guy wearing fucking pink glasses at the club. Depends on the day, okay? Yeah. Morning or night? I used to be a night person, but for some reason, ever since I went to Guadalajara, I've been waking up at fucking 6 a.m. So it's Mexico inspired me to be more on my shit and wake up early and just work hard. Pancakes or waffles? I like French toast. <laughs> Chocolate or vanilla? Mm, fucking Latina. <laughs> He's like <laughs> <laughs> sizzle, some guacamole. <laughs> Book or movie? I, I was just talking about like ice I'm cream kidding, or cupcakes. I'm I know it's because I don't like sweets. <laughs> uh oh, okay. I like like nuts and pistachios. Okay, okay. Book <laughs> or movie? Uh, I don't read. I don't know how to read. So movies. Comedy or horror? Comedy, both. <laughs> both? A little bit of both. Yeah, I like both. I like comedy and horror. I like getting scared. I mean, dude, it, literally, if I get scared so fast. <laughs> like, I'll be, like, jumping off my fucking shits. Apples or oranges? Apples. But oranges for mezcal. Sweet. I'm telling you, I just can't. I'm, like, undecisive as fuck. You said what? I'm undecisive as fuck. I, I like everything. Apples, <laughs> I like to bite into apples, but if I'm drinking mezcal, I want an orange. <laughs> I play sports or watch sports? I don't watch TV, so I like to play sports. I go to the gym, like, every day. Leather or lace? Damn. I don't know. <laughs> leather leather pants. That's what I want. He's like leather pants, lace top. Let's go. Snapchat or Instagram? This is a little antiquated that Yeah, one. That's, a, that's a good question. That's that was funny. okay, I used to ask this question beginning in twenty nineteen when I like started the podcast. So does anyone still use Snapchat? Yeah, I don't know. I've never used Snapchat. TikTok or Instagram? V just okay. set my ass Insta straight Insta as she normally does. <laughs> Instagram is cool because I could just I could just get to like just like fucking lurk and talk shit and just post whatever I want. Cake or ice cream cake? He doesn't like sweets. Yeah, uh, cake, ice cream cake, I guess. Overdressed or underdressed? I feel like I always underdress, but I just bought a bunch of button downs, so my boy, I mean, my ass is going to be fucking wearing button downs and trying to slick my game up a little bit. We love that. City or suburb? I'm a city boy. I think that's it. Is there anything else that you would like to leave the listeners with? I just want to say that I love San Diego and I love your podcast and shout out to Veto and Carlos for being here, serving us wine, having fun and listening to all this crazy shit we've been saying and, and keeping us on track yes sir i love helping with guys. the videos we love you guys we're <laughs> tipsy now <laughs> we're gonna get out of here <laughs> shout out to snooki and jay wow i love you <laughs> was that a dig because i'm from jersey yeah <laughs> i think i told you that last time <laughs> i love i but i love the jersey shore to be honest bro Wow, bunny's I can't like, believe Bunny's like, come on, dude. I can't believe we just closed the podcast with shout to Snooky and Jay Wow. <laughs> yep. And on that true. note, <laughs> but you are always thank you for coming on. You are always welcome. If you ever want to do a part two, if anyone listening or watching has any questions that you would like Steve to answer specifically, leave them in the comments and I will happily set up again in his beautiful shop and just run it back for please, round two. Please leave some comments and subscribe to the YouTube and yeah, we're gonna go have some fun and enjoy san diego and keep drinking wine and yeah playing good music we'll come back for an episode number two and finish some more bottles of wine maybe get a sponsor by then 
again maybe yeah, hopefully people could support the movement and fucking that's where it's at we're gonna keep pu- keep pushing and keep providing the good vibes well thank you for spending your sunday with me and it was fun it was it was a great time and we will see you guys or i will see you next monday hell yeah peace out love you guys bye love you guys Woo! shout out to me just Sh- for being here shout out to veto she is my lifeline at this point so Sh- should we get carlos in here carlos, carlos 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 come here for real hi mom i'm recording a podcast episode can i call you in like five yeah right. next time just give us a heads up a heads up for what i called you yesterday and you never called back and i haven't seen or heard from you i texted you yesterday <laughs> mom i'll make sure she calls you back and texts you back She's she's mad. This is Carlos. (laughs) Nice to meet you all. Thanks for having me. Wait, we asked my mom. Woo! Your mom's gonna be pissed. I know why she's mad at you right now. Well, they think that I'm like dead. I don't know. Alright, I gotta go. It's already late. Later. Hi, chicken. What? 